I've said numerous times this week, I'm not complaining. It's summer, it's great. I was at the Trenton Fun Fest breakfast at the United Church yesterday morning, and there was a woman beside me who was not really complaining, but commenting how hot it was. And I said, well, you know what? It's summer, and we've waited for it. And her son on the other side said, thank you for telling my mother that. <laughs> Anyway, it's good to gather in the warmth of this summer season, and I welcome you with joy to our worship service this morning. In the summer months, we come together as the three congregations of Salt Spring, Scottsburg, and Lionsbrook Pastoral Church. And we're here today at Scottsburg United Church, and I welcome those of you here in the sanctuary and those of you who are joining us for our service online with our uh, service on YouTube or Facebook. Those who are taking part in our service today, for which I'm grateful, are our organist, Stuart Monroe. Scripture reader is Stephanie Cox. The Minister for Minute Permission presenter will be Elizabeth Chanel. Our videographer is Christine McKenzie, and members of the Scottsboro Alliance Pro Choir, who are out this morning, will be offering an anthem. I just remind you very quickly, in the summer we use that generic summer bulletin which has an order of service that you can follow and that's uh, yours for a time but we ask you to place it in the box on your way out, it's on the pew at the back of the sanctuary and on the insert there are, there's information about today's service, in particular the hymns and scripture and other info as well as announcements for this week. There is a note there about an end of season plant sale in support of Scottsburn United Church, and after I sent the material to Lori for printing, I got word from Ian McCara that the sale is done. <laughs> so don't look for any more plans. But he did say to offer thanks to all who supported this effort with funds of $315 raised for Scottsburn United Church. And speaking of Scottsburn United Church, did you notice the new sign out front? I want to say thanks to Wayne Cock for uh, the work Wayne has done in uh, preparing this sign. The old sign had served its time, and because of rot, um, it was uh, rebuilt, and a new sign is in its place. And uh, just notice Wayne has that, that white space on top, because I know you'll all be looking on your way out this morning. <laughs> that white space on top is where the letters for Scottsburg United Church will go that are on order. So thank you, Wayne, for your good work. Worship next Sunday on the 21st of July will be hosted at Lionsbrook United Church for the, that week and the week following, again at 9.30. And next week will be Food Bank Sunday, so I remind you of that. As we gather here, and wherever in our congregations we gather, we acknowledge that the light of Christ is within us. The introit is found in your worship bulletin, and it will rise as you're able to sing. Turn now to number 245. 
our opening hymn is Praise the Lord with the Sound of Trumpet. Three times. 
And those words are at the bottom, aren't they? That's just one word. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Stuart. <laughs> I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God, and the people recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. that had fed the people of Israel during their time in the wilderness 
And the people knew and believed God had provided that for them. And also in that special chest, you'd see the stone tablets that were carved with those Ten Commandments that Moses had received from God on the mountain. Twenty years before this day of celebration, the Ark of the Covenant had been stolen. It had been captured by the Philistines. And early on in his reign as king, David had managed to get it back. And today, on this day, with a triumphal procession, he leads that Ark of the Covenant back to the Hebrew people and into the newly restored city of Jerusalem. And when people that day saw their King David dancing and singing and rejoicing, coming back with that contingent, bringing the Ark of God back to the holy city, they joined in. They joined in the singing and the merriment with gusto. They made music with abandon and they kicked up their heels, dancing together. What an incredible day that was. It's a very significant day in the story of the Hebrew people. It was a day of unbridled celebration. What joy filled their souls and what gratitude filled the air as they rejoiced in God's presence and celebrated God's goodness. They danced. They danced without restraint before God. And we learn that David was so carried away in his joy and praise of God that Michal, who was Saul's daughter, daughter, and one of David's wives, in fact his first wife, Michal was mightily embarrassed by her husband. She watched the whole scene through her window and she disapproved of how David was carrying on that day. Out of the joy he felt because of God's covenant blessing, he was totally forgetting himself and caught up in the moment. Has that ever happened to you? Perhaps to some music that touched your soul deeply or kind of some moment of joy that transported you almost like out of your body and you were just so joyous. He forgot himself and got caught up in singing and dancing in the streets with great abandon. I hope you're picturing this scene. Here's the king of Israel, very undignified, stripped down to his underwear, dancing and kicking up his heels and singing praises to God. Maybe it was just as hot and humid that day as it is <laughs> this week here. But it's true. And Michal, witnessing it all from her window, the scripture says, despised him in her heart. We aren't told specifically why she reacted that way. Evidently, she thought it was most improper and inappropriate for, this, for David to be acting this way. And I'm thinking, well, why? Did she think it was wrong for David to act in this way because he was the king? And this wasn't proper decorum for a national leader? Or did she think it was wrong because he stripped down to his skivvies and cut loose, whirling around before the ark, as writer Frederick Beekner describes it? believing that greater modesty was required? Or did she think, like I know many people of Christian faith have believed through the years, that God only wants solemn dirges and long faces and joyless, lifeless acts of worship? Or did she perhaps think it was improper to show one's feelings in public, including the feeling of joy? Or did she think that one's faith was a very personal and therefore private matter and shouldn't have any place out in the streets? Or could it have been that she didn't understand David's behavior at all? Because she had not allowed herself to enter into the same kind of an intimate relationship with God. Or maybe, as Frederick Buechner suggests, maybe she had her window closed. So she couldn't hear the music and therefore thought that David had completely lost it. Now, as I thought about that, I thought, I bet you they didn't have windows in Jerusalem at that time. So that's a bit of an anachronism there, thinking of it from our point of view. But, if you've ever watched people dancing without hearing the music they were dancing to, you know that it looks pretty strange and pretty outrageous. And that reminds me of a story called The Mad Dancers. A student 
once asked the teacher, why was it that so few understood Jesus? The Pharisees and the scribes, they constantly opposed him. His disciples often seemed confused by his teaching, and still others even suggested that he was possessed by demons. Even his own family feared for his mental health, the students said. And the teacher, as often, replied with a story. Once, there was a wedding couple who brought in the finest fiddlers and guitar players to entertain their wedding guests immediately after the wedding ceremony. And the music was so captivating that soon everyone, young and old alike, got up from their seats and began to dance. The people flung their bodies first one way and then the other. And they church was filled with joy and with dancing, and people even started filing out through the front doors onto the walkway of the church, dancing to the wonderful music. And at that very moment, two people drove by that church building in their brand new luxury vehicle, with the windows of the car rolled up tight, the air conditioning turned up full blast, and music blaring from their radio. And they could not hear a single sound from outside the car. When they came upon this church and saw these people jumping around in front of the church, they just stopped the car and they just shook their heads in disbelief at the sight. What a bunch of zealots, the driver said to his companion. See how they fling themselves about? I tell you, the people that go to that church, they're all strange. <coughs> And the teacher paused after finishing the story and said, That is the conclusion people will draw when they cannot hear the music to which others are dancing. And that was the teacher's answer to why some people didn't understand Jesus. They didn't understand the music of the gospel which he danced to in his life. I don't know, perhaps Michal couldn't hear the music that day either with her ears or her heart. But David felt the music of God's presence and goodness with every bone and muscle in his body, and he danced. He danced and kicked up his heels with all his might. We don't often dance in our worship, do we? Back in the 1980s, I'm remembering how liturgical dance, although not completely common, was not uncommon in our churches. Is another expression of faith, expression of feeling the presence of God. One year at Maritime Conference Annual Meeting, back in the 1990s, Mary and I actually did liturgical dance. The picture it. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> we, with six other people, learned a liturgical dance to do to a piece of instrumental music as part of the memorial service, the opening night of Maritime <clears throat> Conference. Marvel that I did that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if I were to invite you to dance to some of Stuart's music today, you'd probably think I was rather a zealot and rather strange too. Sometimes in the past it's been true that in a good Protestant Christian service of worship, it might even be hard to spot a smile, never mind a laugh, or to see people dance. Worship was taken so seriously. In our history, it was always to be a solemn experience. I remember how awful it was sitting in the choir as a 14-year-old when I got the giggles and the dirty looks I got from the older members of the choir. But things have changed. Thankfully, things have changed. There was a day in our churches when clapping was seen to be radical. When laughing was frowned upon, when people were expected to approach God with a very sedate manner and staid spirit. It's as though there must have been some laws of the church that prevented joy from coming through the door. Things have changed. In contrast to that day, we have David, king of Israel, faithful servant of God, footloose and fancy free, singing and leaping as he worshipped God with thankfulness and joy in his heart. What could be wrong with that? Why would someone find fault 
with rejoicing in God in that way. Do you think Michal, Michal was justified in her harsh judgment of her husband? Do overt expressions of joy have any place in our life of faith? Is there a reason why him shouldn't be happy and sung with gusto? Rather than slow and solemn like a funeral dirge? Could you ever imagine moving to the beat, having a place in worship? Well, of course you can. You know, as I was thinking about that, I thought of Gladys Bass. <laughs> Dear Gladys, a member of Linesbrook and member of the choir for many years, who always felt the music in her soul and in her bones and moved to it and encouraged others to do. And she did one of my last visits with her when she said, don't forget to tell the choir to move. Audrey Chanel, the first time I laid eyes on you, you were no different. <laughs> when I attended with my family, Green Hill Alley United for some months, and Audrey would be in the back, and I could notice Audrey move to the music. <laughs> Felt it deeply. And what a wonderful gift that was, to feel something of more than just kind of me when we come to worship God. Do you think God gets a bit tired of our Sunday morning solemnity or worship that is devoid of joy? I'm so grateful that we now know that it's quite fine to laugh and carry on and to feel something more than just a serious respect for God. And of course, there's time for quiet moments of meditation and seriousness when we gather as a community of faith to worship, but surely there must be also a place for laughter and joy Maybe even kicking up your heels. I am a product of my Scottish Protestant upbringing in the United Church of Canada. So, when I go to those churches where there's a whole lot more freedom, and people are shouting on men and singing out hallelujahs, and sometimes even dancing in the aisles, particularly as evidenced in the African-Canadian Baptist tradition within our communities, you know, I'm not always the most comfortable, but I'm envious of some of it. To see that freedom of spirit, that sense of depth of faith that comes out not just in, you know, being respectful, but comes out in joy. Surely there must be some middle ground that we can find, right? I know we all find our own ways into the churches we feel comfortable in. But surely it is appropriate for us to smile and laugh as we hear the good news of our faith, as we commune with the living God. Certainly there is that time for solemnity, but so too, I'm so thankful, a time for lively music. Music that stirs us and lifts our souls. A time for singing with gusto. A time for, well, what did we sing? Dance with the Spirit, move with the Spirit, sing with the Spirit. I can well imagine God must appreciate that too. And so, going back to ancient Israel, surely David was footloose, but he was not unfaithful. He was footloose and faithful in praising his God that day as he accompanied the ark of God into the holy city. And after all, like David, our worship too is a celebration. It's a celebration of faith. It's a celebration of God's presence. It's a celebration of God's goodness and love. So surely that means some holy joy expressed in our sacred gatherings. And you know, David is there at the head of the procession yet, leading the way for us, praising God with songs and music and dancing. So don't be afraid to join in. Don't just stand by the window with Macau. Clicking your tongue. <laughs> In judgment, with contempt, I hope we will feel in our bodies as well as in our hearts and souls the joy of our faith. That instruments will be raised to sing and make merry in honor of God's loving kindness. As we proclaim our faith in God's presence with us and God's loving kindness toward us, let our worship always be a celebration of gratitude, a celebration of great joy for the faith we share. 
Amen. You may it be so. We're going to sing together. Sing a happy hallelujah. It's number 224. And there's some syncopation, a little bit of a pause in the refrain before the, before the line starts. So just be mindful and listen up to our choir. And let's do it. Let us pray. 
Holy One whose power is love and whose presence <clears throat> is light. If David could dance and celebrate and rejoice in your goodness, so can we. For we too have no less reasons to be grateful to you. We thank you this morning for the beauty of this world as revealed by butterfly wings and waterfalls, splendid sunrises and raindrops dancing on windows, delicate blossoms on flowers and leaves fluttering in the breeze. We thank you, O oh God, for these days of summer and all the pleasures that they bring, basking in the sunshine, swimming in the waves, walking or cycling on the trails, special outings with grandchildren, gatherings with family and friends, and music events all about. We are grateful indeed for all the activities that lift our spirits, that renew us physically and emotionally and spiritually, and that bring us joy. And we are grateful, O oh God, for the faith tradition that's ours, for the ancestors in faith who came before us, for the stories of their lives in Scripture and elsewhere, for the gift of good news that your presence is with us in all times and places, through the highs and lows of life, in happy times and sad times. Your love is a power that seeks wholeness and health and fullness of life for us and for all people. And to this end, Jesus proclaimed a gospel of justice and peace and inclusion. And we heard how Peter brought joy as a man was healed, and he praised you with leaping and dancing in restored health. May our lives, O oh God, reflect the good news of our faith. And may we share that faith with those we meet by what we say and do. And by a sense of wonder and gratitude, we display in our living. May we cast off all that would prevent us from expressing our joy and our faith in you, and may we who are Christ Church share a ministry of healing and caring for those who cry out to you in need, a ministry of offering hope and help to those who need to be lifted up, a ministry of challenging injustice and wrongdoing and being a voice for right relationships. God, for those who daily live on the margins, struggling to have even the most basic needs of life met, we pray that we will not overlook them or their circumstances, but feel their pain and act with compassion, as did Jesus. For those who are without enough food or unhoused, those who are sick and injured, those who are grieving and lonely, those who are afraid and troubled, for them, O oh God, we seek your healing and your help. We pray for the people of those communities in the Annapolis Valley who have been impacted by the wild weather that brought torrential rain and flash flooding this week as they grieve what's been lost, including the life of a young person. May others who have not faced this misfortune be there for them and with them with encouragement and practical help. For all who are victims of injustice, or abuse, or mistreatment, or neglect. For all who are weary from the burdens of life that weigh them down. Give them your sustaining spirit of, of courage and power. And God, we acknowledge this morning with sorrow the violence that is rampant in this world. That infects political life and domestic life and relationships between nations, where guns are so easily used to harm, where people are filled with hatred toward each other and divided. God, we pray that this madness may be seen for what it is, and for a turnaround, that problems and differences may be solved not by shooting but by seeking to understand one another. In the community of faith through the Pictou County Council of Churches, we pray your blessing upon the congregation of Middle River Presbyterian Church and their minister, Reverend Bonnie Langen. Lead them and lead us too in the dance of life and enable us to remember that you are our partner in that dance, constantly with us in joy and in sorrow, 
in hardship and delight, leading us and guiding us to life as you intend it, nurtured by faith, strengthened by hope, and always, always held in love. As we gather these prayers and the unspoken prayers from our hearts to your heart, we join to pray in the words Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I danced in the morning, John Allen sang, and so do we. The hymn by Sidney Carter, number 352, in Voices United. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you.